Alrighty guys, we're back for Boros Discover, and this is a Murders at Karlov Manor Standard Brew, and I'm Red Cat. Let's briefly go over the deck, then hop right into some ranked, but first things first, this was a suggestion over in the Discord, so thank you so much for the suggestion, it's gonna be a fun one. It was essentially to revisit PNLR and Quintorius Cond, so that's what we're doing, this is technically a PNLR build. A 2-mana, two 2-3 two, legendary creature, that's why we're rocking three of them. Thopters you control have haste. Whenever you play a land from exile or cast a spell from exile, you create a 1-1 one, one colorless Thopter artifact creature token with flying. Beautiful stuff. So, are we casting stuff from exile or playing lands from exile? Well, we got all four. Ren's Resolve. Yep, it's gonna do a thing in here. We also have all four geological appraisers. So, four mana, three, two, when it ETBs, if you cast it, you discover three. Okay, they had to ruin it by saying if you cast it. Nah, that's totally fine. It's still a pretty powerful creature, honestly, and you're not mad to spend four mana on this by any means, especially when we have so many terrific three drops to try to cheat out with this too. We'll go over in just a second. Also got that Quintorius Cond with that minus three. You get that discover four. That sounds decent, right? Couple Bone Horde Dracosaurs at the beginning of your upkeep, you exile the top two cards of your library. You may play them this turn. Beautiful. You get those other benefits as well. We also have a couple top end trumpeting connoisseurs. When it ETBs, discover five. Honestly, if you hit any of your five drops with this trumpeting connoisseurs, a discover, then oh, first of all, you're pretty lucky. Second of all, you're very happy about hitting one of those five drops, right? But I'll tell you what, it's like I was saying with the Praiser, we have a lot of great three drops to just cheat onto this board. Like all four war leaders call. Yeah, three mana enchantment. Creatures you control get plus one, plus one. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, deals one damage to each opponent. Yeah, I figure while you're spamming out Thopters and they're flying in the air, it would be pretty good to buff them. But then also, as they are getting spammed onto the board, you're also just dealing damage to the opponent. So with War Leader's Call, we have a little bit of the Boros Go Wide shell packed in as well. Some of them are running Anim Pakal. Yeah, Anim Pakal just poops some gnomes onto the board, and that's that's good. <laughs> it's a good card. <laughs> we got some removal packed in with Nahiri's Warcrafting. Five damage is an important amount of damage, and the only other removal piece is actually the bottom ability on the Trumpeting Connoisseur. So yeah, four pieces of removal. That's a... Uh, that's three more than I usually play with, so that's pretty good, I suppose. <laughs> okay, we also have Voldaird Epicure packed in. It gives us blood tokens. That's important for Gleeful Demolition. Now, Gleeful Demolition, of course, can pop the blood tokens, but it can hit the Thopters, and it can hit the Gnomes on the Anim Pakal as well. It can also hit the Yotian Frontliner, and then eventually we can bring that back with Unearth too. Okay, the mana base, guys. The um, Mirex will help us generate some tokens every now and then, which could help us actually just get the rest of the damage through to the opponent if we have some War Leader's Call on the board. Also have that Restless Bivouac, which could come in handy. Maybe put some extra counters onto Anim Pakal. Some honorable mentions over here. All of these almost made the cut, dude, but I ran out of room. Screlve Defector Might. Reckless Impulse is the same thing as Ren's Resolve, just something to note. Atali's Favor almost made the cut. Emo Dane's Recruiter definitely almost made the cut. Mechanized Warfare and At Sushi was in here as a one of at first. Okay, guys. Hey, we're going to save the more in depth discussion for the end of the video after we get some games in. Maybe we'll change up the deck a little bit before I actually post it over onto Aether Hub as well. Either way, guys, let's go ahead, take this into ranked, and see how we do. Okay, guys, it says waiting for the opponent, and we'll see if it's, okay, I was going to say, we'll see if it's lying to us, because I've been freezing a lot on the waiting for the opponent thing, and then it just comes up after a reload as a draw. You guys will have to let me know in the comments if that's been happening to you as well. Okay, we don't have double red in hand yet. Uh, Ren's Resolve could help us find it. We go first, luckily. I don't know if I like this hand. I think I keep it, though. I would have loved to see PNLR right away. You know what I mean? Save the Murex back because we might need that on turn three for the Warcrafting. Like, maybe. Swift Spear. Oh, no. Oh, jeez, opponent. Maybe we go right into that Ren's Resolve this turn, right? Instead of saving it for anything fancy. 
War leader's call. Wow. That could be good to get down if we don't end up dying in the next couple turns. Um... Okay, to go play with fire. Hopefully it's not like a monstrous rage because that would be a wild turn to you. Oh. Oh. A little bit of a different version of mono red. I, I don't mind seeing that. Well, frontliner. Frontliner Ren's Resolve is available. Probably just going to be that war leader's call over there, but like taking that extra time to set up Right. Hopefully that's okay. I like it feels like the frontliner should come down as an emergency blocker. Especially since we already had war leaders call in hand too. Ooh, there's the monstrous rage. That is a ton of damage. Alright, guys, let's see. <laughs> oh no, another war leaders call. Okay, well, first of all, we go. Warcrafting onto Swift Spear and hope they don't just have a lightning strike in hand. Or at that point, another Monstrous Rage. Or anything in Mono Red, I suppose, right? Maybe we go... E. I don't know if there's... I don't know if there's much here. I guess we see what we see on Warcrafting. Take out that Swift Spear. Lethal Demolition without any artifacts on the board. Oh. <gasps> So if I would have went frontliner, we totally could have grabbed that lethal demolition, guys. And then played Mirax, popped the frontliner, had some chump blockers. Bro, the regret of grabbing the... <laughs> the regret of grabbing that call right now, huh? Oh, no. That could have been pretty sick, dude. Honestly. Well, let's see if we end up dying. I'm pretty sure we're dead here, honestly. Scapegoat. Dude, all right. The Phoenix Chick, let's go. It's a little bit of a different version of Mono Red, so I'm not complaining too. That is, that is six. Good game opponent. Anyways, yeah, those extra chump blockers on the ground could have done a thing. Well, actually, yeah, if I would have grabbed Frontliner, we can kind of, we can kind of blame me for that match, but the triple war leader's call was really bad too. Uh, that early on, at least, right? Without any actual setup on the board. So our triple goblins could have blocked the spear guard. And when this dies, it would have got they would have got a rat back. And then we would have had to double block the scapegoat because it has the menace from being a suspect. We would have taken four. And we would have had one goblin remaining. Maybe Ren's resolve could have helped us find something. Nah, dude, I think we were in trouble. It's a good thing we went first there, or, or we wouldn't have we would have had one less turn as well. So, I'm on a red list opponent. Looks like uh, their goal is to spam out creatures. We don't get to see that little dude that, when it dies, drops a rat. I actually really like that addition. Because how often do your creatures die? How often? Yes, <laughs> is the answer. Okay, hopefully these Mirax don't end up holding us up too often. 25 total land in here. But hopefully we're okay for now. I'm gonna start with that Epicure. Now, we have an artifact for whenever we do end up seeing that Gleeful Demolition. Uh, Ren's Resolve for the turn, it could be. Trade out Dracosaur maybe, it is a little bit a little bit hefty sitting in the hand with only the two mana. And if we see double mana off the Ren's Resolve, I'd be a little bit sad about that. So maybe we start with the swing, since nothing in hand has haste. We drop Merrick's because we need mana on the board. And we wait one turn. I'd rather use the Merrick's for the frontliner and keep the red open. And we might trade out with the blood token, depending on what the opponent ends up doing here. Yeah, already, technically, this is a much better hand, right? Since we got some of our one drops and a little bit of a setup here. All right, I'm sorry, Bone Horde Dracosaur. I'm sorry, buddy. But you might not you might not have a chance for a while. All right, so we don't have a white source for call now, so we're going to go Ren's Resolve. Ooh, 
couple of three mana cards. Okay, not not terrific hits there. Luckily, we still have our third mana. Yeah, luckily, we're still doing anything here. Nothing from the opponent for their second turn. Wasn't a lightning helix or anything fancy. Like a resolute reinforcements, that could have been a thing. Giada, oh buddy, okay. They run the Giada right into the Warcrafting. They knew about the Warcrafting, so it, it's got to be like a second Giada then. Hopefully we find a white source on this Warcrafting too. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. We do not find a white source. Um, So the mountain is the only thing we can play out of those. And we'll play that mountain. And we shall swing. All right, opponent's down to 12, but it's angels, so that their life just, their life total does not matter. <laughs> we know angels can have lifelink easily. Resplendent angel, okay. Ooh, and in pack out, yeah, no white source though. We can start with Ren's Resolve, or we can see what we can find off the geological appraiser. Technically that could find like another Warcrafting too, which could be pretty good. we go Ren's Resolve and find a white source, actually, then we could still play something for the turn. Same concept, we could hit a Ren's Resolve off the Appraiser, though, so I think it's Appraiser, and it's definitely before combat, because there's a bunch of things that could affect the combat if we hit it. Gleeful Demolition. Okay, I will take that. I will take that action. We have to note that Frontliner isn't coming back, though, until we get a white source, so... Yeah, we could have added it to our hand and waited, but we better just cast it for free while we can, you know? Our fifth mana comes down. Let's start seeing those lifelink creatures, huh? They can successfully start pulling into this one. Vindicator. Dude, nice. Okay. Uh, I forget what it... I think we played Vindicator in um, Azorus Angels, I think it was. Or I might have I might have called it Azorus Control. Hey, White Source, let's go. Sundown Pass. Okay. Well, what do I want to do here now that they have lifelink on this? Um, if we buff this board state with War Leader's Call, we could start with... Ren's Resolve, because we could see, like, another call off of that, too. And in Pack Out, actually. Isn't terrible. But we can play all that next turn as well. Probably better to go, go, go. Right? And we do have Epicure for the turn. We'll play that after the fact. We have to consider them up to 16 here. And they're probably going to trade into the Appraiser, then. So down to eight, right? And they didn't have anything exiled because they didn't do anything fancy with the Vindicator. That, but anyways, I was getting to the point of uh, Vindicator was a really cool card. Really neat. It did a thing in that build. Definitely got to revisit it soon. Sixth mana comes down for the opponent. Are we going to get there? I don't know. It's good that we see the Ann and Pakal over here, but... I don't know if Angels runs board wipes or if they just... Oh, uh, they just tapped the cavern for a black mana, so... Archangel. Full power Archangel. Take out some of these creatures. For sure. Now, the best bet for us might just be to push through with the call, if possible. So, like, a goblin off the top would be good. Or a white source off the top would have been good, right? Because we could have brought the Ann and Pacal back. And played Frontliner from the grave, but now we can't. So I suppose we start. Two, three. Okay. We start with the blood token, I suppose, right? And I'll ditch the mountain, because the second Ann and Pacal could do a lot for us technically. Okay, there's the second white source. So now we can successfully play Ann and Pacal. Uh, Seed of the Empire, right? 
Oh, you know what we could have done too? We could have just swung with the three goblins. Okay, back down to eight. If we full swing, we get another guy off of that. They gain three. They're going back up to 11 here. They have great blocks. Is that still worth the full swing? Because they're taking four, five, six. Yes, it's still technically worth the full block, I'm pretty sure. I hope. And if they do end up... They might take seven if they don't trade Resplendent Angel into the 3-3. Three, three. Oh, wait, maybe they're taking eight. <laughs> There's a lot of little numbers going around here. Okay, so they do block the 3-3 three, three with the 3-4, and then they block there. So six, down to one, up to four. I'd say... That was still a worthwhile swing. Now we just... They're probably going to keep blockers back. We hope they don't have a second Archangel. Still Seraph. Dude, nice. They could give Resplendent Angel lifelink full swing, go back up to 10, and generate an Angel at the end. We're in danger, dude. We really are. Oh, now we're getting the white sources. <laughs> Okay, we definitely need to see the cards that let us see more off the top. You know? If we swing with Anim Pakal, they trade with Steel Seraph. That's very likely. Uh, we have the Mirex. And one there. It's still a full swing regardless of the trade, especially since we play the second Anim Pakal, right? Especially since, like, they have lethal in the air next turn anyways, too. So, like, forcing some blocks here, forcing a trade is going to be good. Since they're not gaining anything, when we play in and pack out, it's too bad we couldn't have two of these on the board, but that would be pretty wild, huh? I mean, technically, we could... What is it? Mirror box, right? <laughs> Taking six. Oh! Without life gain on any of these, we actually do just have lethal, guys, thanks to the War Leader's Call. Make sure we don't tap Mirex. We play second and in pack out. And then we activate Mirex. Beautiful. That was good stuff, dude. <laughs> that was really good. All right. Yeah, there was like a whole bunch of numbers being thrown around. And I was like, are they taking seven? Are they taking eight? What's, what's actually going on here? <laughs> And then uh, factoring in the lifelink and everything, too. Yeah, we were piling damage through, luckily. And yeah, when are the full swings actually worth it? And that was perfect case of it definitely being worth it there. Cool, man. Actually being able to go up against angels successfully feels, feels nice. I actually don't know... I think that... That Boros Angel list has been floating about for a little bit, but we don't get to see it too often. I don't know if I've won against it yet. I think that was the actually actually the first victory that I've had against those angels. Uh, don't quote me on that, though. Uh, opponent goes first, and these Battlefield Forge have me a little bit concerned. All right, we'll keep it. We'll give it a shot. Dark Slick Shores... Ew. Okay. No, that's okay. That's okay, opponent. <laughs> I'm going uh, Mirax here to take a little bit less damage because technically they can have like some kind of wild Demir Tempo that knows how to push damage through. So, And since we had the double forge as well. Okay. So I'm going to play Valderian Epicure instead of Ren's Resolve. It did not get countered, and that would not be a worthwhile counter for them either. And we'll probably pop one of the blood tokens, and I don't know about getting rid of a forge, guys, because I think we're going to want to get to five for Quintorius, especially if this is Esper Control. Another cut down. I, do, I don't know if uh, Esper Control runs cut downs. This might be Esper Legends. I feel like Legends used to run a couple cut downs, right? Or Esper mid-range? What, what do they call it nowadays? Esper's gone through changes. <laughs> Especially in uh, what people are calling it. Third mana, let's see it. Rafine, okay. Yes. So Esper Legends is what I want to call it. 
Inventories could be good. Mm. Tempted to trade out, but I'm actually just not. I, I, yeah, I want to keep Quintorius. Okay. Friends resolve. Let's see what we see. Mana. I don't mind it. Mountain for the turn and Epicure. Number three. Yeah, against Esper Midrange Legends Rafine, um, I don't know if we're favored here at all. <laughs> I think, I think, I think there's a chance if we can pop off a little bit with our discovers, maybe. Also, hopefully we see Pia Nalar today, bro. That would be ideal. And, like, when we see it, I don't mean, like, it immediately gets picked up by a go for the throat, too. Like, I actually want to get some Thopters going. Okay, Battlefield Forge. Pretty good when you do the Ren's Resolve and you actually get to use both of the cards. So both being land is just, like, not a bad thing, unless you're already flooding out for some reason. Which we definitely have a lot of land, but we could trade out with Blood Tokens. Um, hopefully this isn't a Spell Pierce, guys. Wait, Spell Pierce doesn't hit creatures. I'm crazy. Don't listen to me. <laughs> Geological appraiser. Woohoo! Woo! Oh, that's what I'm talking about, buddy. All right. Three warriors call. And then next turn, we have uh, Quintorius Khand to try to drop onto this board, too. Go for the throat. Who invited you to the party? Go for the throat. Yeah, that's 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 what I mean. Like if we would have seen Pia Nalar, like we know exactly what would have happened to our poor little buddy. Our poor little legend. And they draw on the wedding announcement. Bone horde. Wow. I mean that doesn't survive, right? Oh man. I even I don't save a blocker because yeah, we want to keep pushing as well for two. Hmm, not sure if that's stuck at all. Quintorius Khan could take some pressure off of our face, so we'd probably want to go plus on this. No? Well, because it if we go minus, it dies like Rafine swings into it. We attempt... Oh, anything could easily be a, a make disappear as well. I think I'd rather Dracosaur get countered and similar concept, if Dracosaur hits the board and they drop a go for the throat on it, it's going to be a no more lies. Oh, man. Yeah, we don't even... Sometimes we... I'm still playing around make disappear. No more lies. You have to have three. Like, paying three is a lot. Oh, they definitely pick up Quintorius with the deep cavern bat. We are officially in danger. But technically, no more lies still could have hit the war leader's call. If I had Bone Horde and Quintorius in hand together, I think they still would have hit Quintorius with the Deep Cavern Bat. Right? I, yeah, I think that still would have been the choice, especially with how much spot removal is potentially in their deck. Including Wandering Emperors, too. Oh no, mana off the top. That's not great. I'm going to send the Forge, probably. Their Festivity flips. We're going we're gonna to take the turn to send the forge and see what we see here because we'll still have five okay another three mana card so if no more lies is open either of these can get countered and in pack is a little bit better to set up onto the board but again with with how much removal could be floating about we'll get the mana down we'll Attempt the Ann and Pakal. This is a pretty good counter or removal spell from the opponent. This is an ideal creature to put into our graveyard. It's going to be No More Lies number two. How many No More Lies do you suppose uh, the opponents run in? Hopefully it's just two, right? I feel like back in the day they used to just run a couple Make Disappears. Uh, with eight... 
they have lethal, so we are forced to keep a blocker back, which means if they remove the Epicure, we are officially dead. They kind of picked us apart really effectively, huh? It was cool to get the appraiser down and get that free war leader's call. Like, that was really cool. Um, maybe if I would have played around the No More Lies more effectively, maybe there could have been a chance. I suppose there could still be a small chance if we go... No, there's no way. Because if we see, like, Geological Appraiser, even if we see... Even if we see our biggest... Of removal... It won't hit the Rafine anymore either. Like, we could hit the Deep Cavern Bat, which is a 4-4 now. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. Um, so I'll trade out the War Leader's Call just to see what we can see. Bonehorde Dracosaur. Wow. Yeah, dude, if that first one would have hit, like, this is, this is an ideal creature to have on the board versus Rafine. That's so good, dude. Unfortunately, now we are too low. This one does land. We only have one card in hand. I am slowly but surely losing my voice for the video, guys. Oh, no. <laughs> Feel it. Destroy evil. <sighs> Destroy evil, but... But, but... Ren's Resolve. Okay, that could have been good somewhere in the middle of there. So some Somewhere in the middle. Hey, good game opponent. Yeah, dude. Their deck is set up to pick apart any deck, right? Like, any anything that they go up against, they are well-suited to deal with. So I can't think. What is favored against Esper Legends? I'm not 100% certain, guys. Honestly. All right, let's keep the ball rolling. That was two Destroy Evils. I kind of want to go... What, what do we got here? I can't click on it. Ooh. <gasps> Ooh. The pride of Hall Clade. Dude, we got to we gotta make a big butt deck again, huh? That's a... Wait a minute. How come I haven't made a deck with that yet? Like, what am I thinking, guys? I'm missing out, clearly. I have to go back to the video I made... It must have been a couple months ago at this point, before before the new set came out, where we had a whole bunch of big butt creatures as well, and then just kind of like revamp that, like revisit that only with that card. That's what I got to do. When it goes first. This is good. I think this is totally solid, dude. Epicure into Gleeful Demolition is no joke for a turn one and turn two. While we save up, on turn two, we play our second land, and if we don't see a land, or even if we do, turn three, Ren's Resolve is still pretty good. It's proven itself worthy, uh, worthwhile on turn three. Mm, depending on what the opponent plays, though, we might skip that and go right into Ann and Pakal and just keep swinging wide then. It really depends. Go ahead and pause until the opponent shows up. The opponent has arrived. We're going to keep this. You got for me, opponent. Swamp. Okay. Well, crucible. Epicure. Yeah, taking less damage. Even though. <gasps> you monster. Cut down on the epicure. Oh, brush land. Okay. Well. See, with the mountain, we could have taking one and then kept crucible as utility but this is also totally fine but we are going to go gleeful demolition for the turn do i do they have something they're not going to tear us under this blood token are they for real they might march okay I was thinking tear us under with the colors, but do we want to trade anything with this current hand? Nah. 
Now, I think this could be another deck that we really want Quintoris Cond against, right? And that's a one of in here. Like, whenever it comes to trading out, I always think whatever's at the top of our hand that we can't cast right away anyways. The Celestis. This could easily be... Okay, we're going to try Anim Pakal setting up with this. Guys, PNLR is hiding in the build. We have to find it. Have to find it somewhere. Virtue, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, geological appraiser, I suppose, right? We could go Ren's Resolve, but nah. It's it's appraiser. Let's hope it doesn't get countered. Because while they haven't shown that they had blue yet, Celestis taps for anything, so. Ren's Resolve. Okay. Okay, I do have PNLR in here, right? Maybe I should have made it a four of. Oh, no. It's kind of worried about it being a legend and, like, hitting it off of other discovers and stuff. You know what I mean? Okay, Epicure. I mean, I guess we play this, and I guess we attempt the Cond. And I'm going to go right into the minus three. Okay, the one off the forge. The, the white sources have been a little bit brutal, but... All right, Cond, find me something good, buddy. PNLR, maybe? That could be cool. Removal for the Cond. Removal for the Cond might mean... Okay, it might mean no removal for the appraiser, but they gain three off of that anyways. Oh, and we hit the appraiser. I'm going to put that in hand. Call me crazy. But I want the ETB on that. Yeah, I totally do. I would have, I probably would have played it if we did have like the PNLR on the board for the extra Thopter and everything. Start with Resolve. We might hit a Resolve off the Appraiser. So yeah, we start with that. Come on, guys. Somewhere in this build is the build around. Ren's Resolve. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're going to find it right here, right here, right now. <laughs> okay. Okay, Sundown Pass. Isn't bad. We could go Ren's Resolve again. Okay. Well, I mean, this... This couldn't be any slower for what's going on right now. I might as well go Ren's Resolve, because now I'm not concerned about losing extra mana. Like, if we see two mana off the top... Okay, that's totally fine. Four Leaders Calm. At the ready. Outrageous robbery, huh? You took my PNLRs, didn't you? That's all three of them right there. <laughs> Wouldn't that be something else? All right. Restless Cottage. I have no idea what we're up against. It might just be an outrageous robbery build with just an outrageous amount of removal, maybe, but we haven't really run into that much. Sunfall. Uh, like, cut down March, uh, March of the Otherworldly Light, then Wretched Sorrow. I guess, yeah, Sunfall, Virtue, I guess that is a lot. It's till the end of this turn, right? We should get that other white source down. War Leader's Call. Then we have that. Okay. We have Frontliner. This is, this is going to be difficult, guys. This is going to be a really tough uphill battle. But we'll see. We'll see. Because they only have one card left in hand, and we know what's in our deck. So we know that we don't have any board wipes. Probably going to use that blood token to trade out the forge. Sunfall number two. Um, Actually, cancel that. We might, we might see... Uh, gleeful Demolition off the top to restock the board, and we won't have an artifact then. All right, let's see it. Bone Horde Dracosaur. Dude, I'll tell you what. The draws, though. The draws this game have been feeling good, but everything else feels a little bit unlucky, right? Their last card's a go for the throat. Guys? <laughs> what? What's happening, dude? 
Okay, I guess the opponent's deck is literally just removal with outrageous robbery. So, like, I guess the, the goal there is to just win with the opponent's deck then. And, yeah, they start taking our stuff out of the grave with the virtue. Dude, we're in serious danger. War leader's call. Okay, I mean, <laughs> I guess that comes down. And, like, we can generate another artifact off of the Mirex if we really need to make Gleeful Demolition, but I think like Mirex Mirex might be the play this turn anyways over the Blood Token right? So they grab our Bone Horde Dracosaur and we're just like in danger dude I was so excited to see the Dracosaur and the opponent's like well that's actually mine now okay looks like they hit a Plains and a Mountain off of us so far Oh, don't click that. Don't click that. You gotta generate your Murex token first. There you go. Hit the opponent a few times. Luckily, Nahiri's Warcrafting hits Dracosaur, but, like, we're in so much trouble. They trade out here. More mana. Uh, Epicure isn't bad. That's not bad at all, because now we can successfully start with the Blood Token without any fear of needing, like, an extra artifact if we see a Gleeful Demolition. And, like, let's be real. If we see a Gleeful Demolition... Okay, we're gonna go Mirror X for the turn again. We go Gleeful Demolition. We do have these Fraxian Mites. One, two. Could let them keep the Dracosaur and just keep spamming the Mirror X, right? So one, two, three. So we still have the blood token. See what we see. Um, war leader's call. <laughs> Number three. We probably don't want them to get too much value from the Dracosaur. Um, oh, this doesn't exile. They just get it right back. Yeah. Yeah, guys. Uh, they just... They just bring it right back with the Virtue. So it actually is Braxian Might for the turn. They take two down to nine. They're gaining off a of Celestis. Because I ended up playing two things, right? My apologies, opponent. I am thinking, buddy. I did end up playing two things, right? What did I do this turn? Oh, Blood took. Wait. Okay, well, either way, it's just going to be Mirax. <laughs> it's just going to be the Mirax for now. Uh, let's not forget they have Restless Cottage too, which food tokens can help them gain a bunch of life as well. So, man, tough business. Okay, they are giving us some targets for the Warcrafting to actually see more off the top of our deck too. Uh, Epicure blocks really well. Let's see what they grab with this this time around. It's going to be our Anim Pakal. Nice, dude. The opponent's deck looks terrifying, man. And they are definitely beating us with our own cards right now, too. If they full swing, I think it's a great full swing for the opponent. Like, power up the Restless Cottage, at least one of them. They are going to power up the Restless Cottage. Okay. Because they'll have that food token available, too. Should we chump? Or just, like, take all of it? Oh, it's just nine? Oh, and the uh, Ann and Pakal gnome. Okay, we'll block the gnome. PNLR in hiding right now. At least we have a bunch of targets for the war crafting, but we might even just hit the dinosaur just to try to see more, you know? Down to nine. And they still have one of our cards over there, too. Unfortunately, the two damage from the... Yeah, they gain three off the food right now. Okay. I don't know what we could see. They're at 12. Okay, Epicure. Like, that isn't that bad, is it? We don't want them to swing in the air. If we go, like, War Leader? One, two, three, four. We'll still have... One, two, we'll still... Okay. This might be the best bet, but maybe if we go Warcrafting first, then... <laughs> this is 
really tough decisions, man. Let's see if we see the PNLR first of all. But then, like, we have nothing to do with it for now, too. Yeah, let's hit the end and pack out just see the two. Instead of seeing the four by hitting the uh, dinosaur. And then pack out a much better target. I guess they just bring it back, but still. <gasps> Appraiser. See, okay, technically, we could see a little bit more here than what we were going to do with the Epicure and the other, uh, the other Calm. So let's see it. We're digging through. We find the final war leader's call. <laughs> that's really funny, dude. Um, terrific swings, but then that's that for next turn. So they could take the eight like this. So yeah, we just full swing. We're dead. We're dead next turn, unfortunately, guys. I'm sure of it. Because it's going to be five in the air. And then they have the restless power up. And oh, they're going... They're going for multiple blocks here instead of saving, instead of just taking the eight. Okay. I don't mind this. Maybe we do survive if the appraiser survives. So they bring back the Anim pack out. Yeah, yeah, we should have just hit that token, huh? They would have had the Anim pack out block. But if they didn't, actually, still worth the target maybe because... Now it won't be getting two counters because they'd be swinging with two different creatures at that point, too. Hmm. And guys, I want to I want to like go one more after this as well. I can't believe it. We're alive, dude. Literally can't believe it. What's in the opponent's hand? They didn't power up Cottage. It has to be something huge, right? Devious cover-up. Well, with three War Leaders calls on the board and an Epicure in hand, Gleeful Demolition off the top would do it, right? We drop Epicure and then drop the Gleeful Demolition on the Blood Token. Oh, what did they, what did they take from us, though? Oh, they... Did they take our Gleeful Demolitions? Monsters, guys. Monsters. <laughs> okay. Um, Let's see here. One, two, three. I mean, what's the last card in their hand, right? Because technically... One, two, three. One, two, three, four. Okay. I guess it's this. And Mirax. Because that's four damage. And then we have another three. What do you guys think? Oh, it doesn't have to be Mirax. It could be Trumpeting Connoisseur. Mm, they haven't shown that they had blue. All right. Trumpeting Connoisseur is much more fun. And if they end up gaining life by some miracle here. GG opponent. We got there, guys. Oh, my goodness. Okay, I need to hold up. I want to look at this graveyard real quick. View battlefield. <laughs> Deadly cover up, a sunfall, march of the wretched sorrow, a march of the otherworldly, uh, light, a cut down, but that wasn't it, right? Yeah, there was another sunfall as well as another cut down too. Brutal stuff, opponent. Holy cow, buddy. Um, um, with 43 minutes in, we're pushing it over time. We gotta see that PNLR, and if we don't see it in the last game, I guess, oh well. <laughs> we tried, we did our best, you know what I mean? Every now and then when you build a deck around a card, uh, the, the card hides. Uh, but there's definitely good reason to try another match too. Uh, try to get it above that 50% uh, win rate, right? We lost one, we won one, we lost one, we won one. Let's end it on a high note here. Um, dang, dude, I don't think this is a bad hand. I'm gonna keep it, but it's too bad PNLR isn't in hand, you know what I mean? Start with that frontliner and maybe just go turn to demolition, but we'll see what we end up drawing. PNLR, PNLR. I summon thee! I summon thee! Nope. <laughs> okay. 
So Gleeful Demolition, totally fine. We could try to find more off the top with Ren's Resolve if we see double land. We see double land, oh well. Okay. I think that's a little better than the Gleeful Demolition, and I also think that the opponent... We saw double land there, too. I'm going to save a blocker. I think that we're going to be on the run in no time, especially if this is Boros go wide. Because Mirex was our only white source to you. Or I guess I'll accept that. Mm. Nah, I shouldn't. Okay, I... Like, Frontliner as an emergency blocker... That's one thing, but now we can't bring it back from the graveyard for the demolition. We ended up seeing an Epicure anyways. Well, land. So now we can swing with Frontliner, and if they block with the Resolute Reinforcement, it is what it is, because now we actually have the other artifact. Okay. Okay. Epicure. Full demolition. And we technically don't have. We technically don't have this uh, mountain. This is going to go bye bye. So we don't have geological appraiser just yet. Here it comes down. Kamano. It's not Boros go wide. Wait, Kamano's in some of them. Case. Going to pop the epic here. We still got four. So pretty good. Lethal Demolition. Okay, but first things first. Ren's Resolve. Epic Cure number two. Right, so... Full Swing. Without a second white source... So it's gonna be it's gonna be Epicure over here instead of the Gleeful Demolition. That way we utilize as much from the Ren's Resolves as possible. And then we're gonna play the other Ren's Resolve next turn, very likely. Unless we need to target something with the Warcrafting. Uh Knight Errant could be a good target for the Warcrafting. We won't see anything on top, but like it's a big beefy creature that they're <gasps> Pianalar, we got it in hand. Let's go. Mission accomplished, guys. We can now successfully retire. Um, so we don't have a white source for it though. <laughs> um, we'll let them keep their knight Aaron of Eos. We still have a pretty good swing. They block the one that we buff with the frontliner, so we'll buff a goblin. A lot of stuff could change the combat. So I'm gonna start with Ren's Resolve just to see what we see. No white source, but a land is fine. All right, full swing. We just keep going. I don't think we die next turn. And Gleeful Demolition to restock the goblins. Hopefully we see the white source for the PNLR, huh? The, uh, funny enough... The Mirex just kind of feels like it needs to be more dual land. Like, we've really been struggling with the white mana on the board, so we're, we'll go ahead and take a look at that in the final thoughts here, which we might have to cut a little bit shorter than usually. Luckily, it was really hard for me to talk about this deck briefly at the beginning, so I kind of went over a lot of the stuff anyways, so. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They might just hold back here. Oh my goodness, guys. They are just dropping their hand on this board. Um, what was it for the turn? Epicure, Novice, Inspector, and Warden of the Inner Sky. Well, it would have been pretty dangerous for them. It definitely would have been pretty dangerous for them to tap any of these. Okay. Appraiser. I wouldn't mind using the Warcrafting, but Appraiser. Hey, maybe we'll see a PNLR off the Appraiser, too. Actually, just going to be a Yotian Frontliner. Ew. A pretty bad hit, right? We'll play the other land. So they have six. We have seven. We can get one through. <laughs> uh, and the blocks are all in their favor. So hopefully we don't die next turn. Warden's going to be good to hit with our 
first war crafting that we had in hand. Yeah, this one this one kind of feels like a little unlucky, right? Not not seeing the white source, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's how I put the mana together. I'm definitely gonna have to take a look at it. They draw off the clue. They find a land. We still have three open here. Could easily be. Oh, they pass it back. Wow, okay. So Trumpet and Connoisseur isn't bad. I'd rather just play it though, right? Let's see if we can find the white source off the Nahiri's war crafting. And I'm going to pop the Warden to C2. C2, we could find like a two drop or like another Ren's Resolve or anything like that, really. Now we only get to play it this turn, guys. So it's going to be Battlefield Forge. All right. Get that forge down and Ian Alar making an appearance. That's what I'm talking about, dude. <laughs> and we have six mana next turn for Trumpet and Connoisseur. So all I ask opponent is that you don't kill me. I'm holding it all back. Resolute reinforcements. Well, they're definitely going to try, huh? They're definitely going to try. Oh, buddy. Okay, they pass it back, dude. All right. If we discover well enough here, let's do this, man. I don't know what the opponent's hitting, but I thought I was getting unlucky. It kind of feels like, ooh. War leader's call. Oh, buddy, dude. I should just go for the full swing at this point. We should be wide enough to actually make it make them block something right so i'm actually gonna go all in the air and hope that they don't have removal for our thopter as well because that'll be four in the air oh buddy what a hit huh resolute reinforcement <laughs> they're gonna have the blocks here it looks like guys so five five take out the best thing the biggest thing uh, they might want to take out pianolar honestly yeah, there they go. Okay. Bro. Give them the time they need to block here. Honestly, like, this is, uh, they, they're probably going to need to block everything. Again, they could still have spot removal for the 4 4 too. Could totally be a get lost or something. Hey, yep, they're, they're going for all the blocks. That's still going to be... Okay, yeah, dude, they totally had the blocks here. They're only taking six. The Nalar is going to go bye-bye, too. <gasps> Destroy evil! Oh, no, guys! <laughs> that was awesome, opponent. Dude. All right, now the good news is we still have a menacing trumpeting connoisseur here. Mirex to generate tokens too, but this is anyone's game. I was not expecting that destroy evil. So it ended up being a lot of great trades for the opponent. Oh, they go recruiter uh, for the um, adventure side there. Okay, um, one in the air. They got great blocks on the ground. We go on to the trampling guy. Be eight. Only take out a few of their things. Okay. Well, the land isn't great, but there's no doubt in my mind that we still swing here, especially since we have no great ways of kind of like reestablishing, right? And hopefully... So Frontliner dies, but we can bring it back. So both of those die. Getting one, two, three, right? Now, do we keep the guy in the air? Or do we make sure? I guess I guess it's Murex, right? And then Gleeful Demolition, the guy on the ground. Yeah, totally fine. And then keeping the Yoti and Frontliner for next turn, too. Case of the Gateway Express. Easily remove the guy in the air. 
Dude, anyone's game. They have all the blockers they need for the ground now. They're going to swing. We're going to take it. Okay, there we go. All right, awesome. A geological appraiser. Let's hit something good here. You know <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind seeing it, but we needed a little bit more for the turn, huh? Because if they reestablish... One, two... We get one through... We still just go, huh? I, I think we still just go. <laughs> and still force some blocks here, too. We could have seen a little bit better, but... We're taking out one of these things... We're getting one damage through. All that's really important. Okay, and we still have three creatures. Hopefully that was fine. I don't know if we wanted to hold back. Because we could just see... We could just see land off the top, right? Oh, Emma Dane's recruiter get more blockers. Yenilar, can your thopters do the thing? Ooh, Anim Pakal. All right. <laughs> Holy cow, dude, we're in so much trouble, though, aren't we? They're down to one, and we just need more. Because if we swing, that's going to be... What? How much is that getting through? Nothing. None of it gets through off the swing. They have the blocks everywhere, except PNLR survives the swing, right? Because if they... Do yeah, PNLR survives the swing, so I suppose we swing to put a counter onto the Anim. Man, uh, Restless Bivouac would have been terrific. So they trade. They block. They block. They chump. The PNLR survived the swing. That's what we wanted there. And we got rid of a couple more of their guys, and then we generate Mirex token. And then when we swing next turn, it'll be two guys off the Anim Pakal. You guys will have to let me know in the comments, have these full swings actually been worthwhile? What do you think? Oh, I'm sorry, Pony. I didn't know I was the one holding it up there. I don't know. I don't know how long it was because I wasn't looking at this button. Okay, frontliner, huh? We don't know what's in their hand. Frontliner doesn't have haste or anything fancy. We're going for it, guys. I'm so happy that we actually got to see PNLR in this last one. Yeah, every every single turn we just got to go for it, and hopefully the opponent runs out of fuel. If they do run out of fuel, they can go ahead and get rid of some of these blood tokens at any time. Crucible, bro, they're still going. They now have a successful double block into Ann and Pakal if they wanted to. Wait, one, two. Oh, no, they don't. No, they don't. Okay, that's good. So Anim's going to survive here. They have to completely block wide. Okay. So we lose all of our 1-1s. One they lose the 1-1s one that they just generated. And we have Mirex for their turn. You want to do it at the end? Because I guess you never know if they're going to drop like a surprise end the festivity or something wild. No, not my Anim. Not my Anim. What a back and forth, man. Because they still have two. Three. They're going for that Emma Dane's recruiter. Oh, no. Okay, okay. That they don't have any swings. It's too risky. Oh, the uh, Vigilance. The Vigilance. Okay. Oh, they tapped that, though. Yeah, so we're just top decking here, huh? So now that we know nothing's left in their hand, we can generate that without any fear. Down to four. Come on, guys. Come on. Both cases flip. No, it's a land. <laughs> we successfully drew poorly, huh? All right. No swings. Maybe it was all my attacks. But no, if I would have held back at all, I think this was going to start leaning towards them easily. Oh, yeah, guys. I think we drew really poorly here at the end. Uh, one, two, no matter what their full swing gets through. But we'll let them play this out, because they were they were very good sports while I waited out uh, my turns and whatnot too. Plus, 
Yeah, I mean, we're already over time. The video is easily going to go over that hour as we got to talk more. In the final thoughts, really happy we saw Kia Nolar here. A little disappointed we couldn't draw a little better. There were so many... Wait! They missed lethal. I mean, I guess we're losing everything anyway, so I guess they could play the long game. But, like... Yeah, no, I'll totally see what's on top. Like I said, we're already super over time anyways. Activate my Mirror X. I guess you never know. We could find an, a Voldaren Epicure. It's a mountain. <laughs> womp womp. Huh? That will go for the full swing. Let's do this. Um, At that point, like, we have 25 land in here, too, so... So, I mean, seeing all this excess mana... It's not necessarily unlucky, I suppose. Well, how much is it? We got nine on the board. Let me go ahead and draw off the clue. We'll drop them that good game, huh? Go ahead and swing on in, opponent. War leader's call. I bet they've been looking for that for a while, huh? I mean, technically, so were we. Uh, any amount... Any amount... Oh, wow, just... Just the back and forth. That was anyone's game for sure, dude. 17-minute match. Whew, good thing we got a quick one in at the end, huh? <laughs> All right, guys. Hey, we're well over an hour into the video, and I generally don't like going that long uh, into video. So let's go over the deck briefly again, unfortunately. Like I said, though, this one was really hard to go over briefly, so we kind of already went over everything anyways. And we also get to see a lot of these cards all the time anyways. Uh, in that last game, like, what's something we could have seen that just would have been terrific? Like, literally anything, dude. I'll tell you what. <laughs> there was so much in our deck that could have helped us push that last little bit of damage through, especially a War Leader's Call. Uh, the Destroy Evil was wild from the opponent. Really good. They definitely had that in there for the mere matches, period. Do we want one? Maybe, honestly, I'll tell you what, man. We actually got to cast the Trumpeting Connoisseur because the 25 mana is generous. This is good. It felt like 25. We didn't flood too often, and really the flooding only ended up happening at the end of that last one where we just didn't want to top deck land. Like, we just needed to top deck literally anything else, right? The Mirex really came in handy. I wouldn't drop these, even though it really felt like we were struggling to actually see white mana. Speaking of white mana, here's the white mana. There it all is. That's a lot. Uh, don't count the Mirex, though, because that's only for one turn. So we got four generic, two of them being Seed of the Empire, because that'll totally work with 25 land. Uh, one's, one of the mountains, of course, is going to be a Crucible of Defiance, which isn't actually a mountain. I know it's a red source, but you guys know what I mean. And then we also have 10 of the dual lands in here, two of them being Restless Bivouac, which also would have been terrific in that last match. Holy cow, man. I'll tell you what. The opponent kind of found what they needed to find when they needed to find it too in that last game. Uh, so yeah, that, that was something else. This should technically be enough white mana. I wouldn't drop a mountain and go up a plains, but you totally could because we kind of struggled to see the white mana when we needed to see it. But it's also just kind of a splash. As you can see, we just have a bunch of Boros cards in here and Frontliner only has the white source on the Unearth as well. So yeah. Epicure's extra poke to the opponent's face was always pretty good, huh? I'll tell you what, Ren's Resolve kind of showed up at awkward times, but at the beginning of the game, it's usually pretty good. And like I said, while we were playing those games, it really proves itself on turn three sometimes. Especially if you do end up seeing a couple mana off of it, it gives you a lot of extra value. And at that point too, you're just kind of hoping that PNLR is also on the board generating some Thopter value. In that full swing where the opponent ended up surviving, we could make the argument that I should have kept the PNLR back so it didn't end up dying, but we also didn't know that the opponent wasn't going to die there as they uh, flashed in the resolute reinforcements and happened to have enough blockers. Not only did they have enough blockers, they dropped that destroy e uh, evil on the war leader's call. Dude, that was a wild just roller coaster ride, huh? That, like seriously, GG opponent, like really good game, huh? Okay, guys, hey, enough rambling. I, I honestly, 
If I did go over this in more detail, I don't know exactly what I would say. The games kind of spoke for themselves, the discover on everything felt great. Going greed with the Quintorius discover and putting the geological appraiser into hand, guys, there's like a lot of moments where it kind of just felt like our discovers were pretty poor too. Well, I mean, I was kind of back and forth. Yeah, yeah, no, we were flipping a coin. Yeah, it's fine. It's totally fine. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna cry about being unlucky because it did feel a little bit back and forth, right? I think so. Guys, if you made it this far into the video, holy cow. For real, y'all are champions. Make sure you check out that description where we got that Discord link as well as that Patreon link if you're interested in supporting the channel that way. I hope you enjoyed the longer video this evening and uh, hopefully overall in this video, I went over the deck well enough too. Uh, yeah, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> Alrighty guys, hey, I will see you in the next video.